Welcome, we've had the opportunity to test the 23.6 inch circular panel from AUO with our LT1920 LCD controller. The items used were the AUO 23.6 inch circular panel, the ALT1920 LCD controller, the five button switch mount for the OSD, the LVDS cable specified for this panel, the backlight cable also specified for this panel connection, the OSD cable for the switch mount board, a power cable to connect to the controller, and we'll need a supply for a 24 volt DC input. In order to carry out the correct connections and configurations, we'll follow a connection diagram. This is available from our control solution generator on the website. The connection diagram tells us the panel details, that's the voltage of the panel and the resolution, type of backlight, what cable connections are required, the specifications of the power supply, details of any accessories we're using, in this case, the five button OSD switch mount and the cable. The controller image shows us where the cables connect to. It also tells us which jumper and switch settings we need to make for the specific panel we're using. You can see when we take this image and overlay it over a photograph of the controller that they match. The connection diagrams really do help when you're putting these kits together and making the configurations on the controllers. We'll start by making the settings on the controller. So first JA6, this is for the panel power voltage select. We need to move the jumpers to match the ones on the connection diagram. The next is JA3. This is for the panel power voltage select, setting the panel to correct panel voltage. Next, we have JB1, JB2, and JB3. These are all to do with the backlight control. JB5 is for the backlight control type selection. B2 to JP5 are for the LVDS pin assignments. SW1 and SW2 is for the panel selection. On the diagram shows the position for each switch. JB7 is for the backlight voltage control. And finally, JP6, this is the power input control. This needs to be closed if using the five button switch mount in order to provide power to the LCD controller. The next step is to connect the cables to the accessories and to the panel. We'll begin with the five button OSD switch mount. We'll connect the OSD cable to this. We'll now connect the power input cable to the 24 volt DC supply. The LVDS panel cable. This cable is labeled controller side and panel side. So you need to ensure that you have it in the correct orientation. The cable connects to the rear of the panel into the connector. And there are, in this instance, two locking connectors. So carefully position the connector in place and just push until it clicks into place. When carrying out this testing, it can be useful to help secure the cables into place. So I'm just gonna place a piece of tape over the cable to stop it being pulled out accidentally. The next cable we'll connect is the backlight cable. This specific panel only uses one backlight cable. So we need to take the cable with the connector and locate it to against the uh, receiving connector and push it into the slot and ensure that it is secured correctly. As you can see, I need to push it in further to ensure that it's fully secured. As we did with the LVDS panel cable, we'll secure the backlight cables in place whilst we're testing the panel. Next, we'll rotate the display and when doing so, we need to ensure the panel has no flex in it and we'll lay it onto the flat surface so we can connect the power cables and prepare the cables to connect to the controller. To help with the testing, we've brought both the LVDS panel cable and the backlight cable out to the same side. This will make it easier when connecting to the controller and connecting also to the power source. Before we make the connections of the power to the backlight cables and the controller, we need to ensure the 24 volt DC power supply is turned off. So we'll disconnect that and then we'll connect the backlight cables. 
After these are connected, we're ready to do the final connections. These are the cables connecting to the ALT 1920 LCD controller. The first cable we're going to connect to the LCD controller will be the LVDS panel cable. This should be labeled controller side as we've connected the panel side to the panel side connector. So we're going to connect this cable into the J3 connector of the LCD controller. Ensuring the pins are located and it clicks into place. The next cable to connect it is the backlight cable. This will be connected to CNB1. Again, make sure the cable connector is fully pushed into the connector on the controller board, making a good connection. We'll next take the cable that's connected to the five button switch mount for the OSD. This needs to be connected to CNC1. We're now down to the last couple of cables. The next cable being the power cable coming from the 24 volt DC source. This needs to connect to PP2. This is positioned at the same side as the backlight cable connection and the OSD connection. Finally, the last connection. This is the signal source. This could be coming from your PC. It could be coming from a media player. And we're using a HDMI input for this. And this is going into the P3 connection on the LCD controller. With all the connections made and ensuring that they're all secure, we're ready now to power on the controller. So we'll plug in the 24 volt DC supply and we'll see the indicator lights come onto the LCD controller. Next, the backlights will turn on and the source should be displayed on the panel. This panel accepts a signal resolution of 1920 by 1080 with the content positioned in a specific place in that resolution. The details can be found in the panel specification. Here you can see we've entered the OSD menu and we can display and check what the resolution that's being accepted. And by using the OSD menu, we can check um, which input's being used and we can set the brightness and other features that are found within the controller. It's been a fantastic opportunity to work with this panel and test it with our LCD controller. We've used the ALT1920 controller here but many of our other controllers will also drive this panel. So it depends on what inputs you require, what features you may need from the controller. So if you have any questions, please get in touch with your local Digital View office. Also, please have a look at our website. You'll find all the controllers listed there. Thank you for listening.